Welcome back. This is episode 3 of my Nuzlocke. This is the continuation of the second attempt. The first attempt ended very shortly. I have, as you can see here, Rogue the Wartortle, ASMR the Wismer, Android 26 the Pikachu, and I forgot the last one. Next area, we run to an Abra immediately, which at first makes me worried that something went wrong between this session and the previous session, because Abra actually is a Pokemon you would run into here. But you know, Bubble turns out to be super effective, so that kind of makes me more confident in it. Unfortunately, I still hadn't updated the layout of my recording, so... We're just gonna have to continue not seeing the other screen. And I go back to training. For the Hariyama in this area are electric type. doing my actual recording of this dialogue during my editing process. So way after the fact. I don't necessarily remember what was going on in my head at the time. But in this Nuzlocke, the special rules aside from the standard Nuzlocke rules are the obvious Oops Clause, Sacred Ash Revival, all fossils that are found above ground are valid and can actually be used to get additional Pokemon. Oh, Golem, the Charmander. That was the last one. I have the setting on set mode, so I cannot change out between my opponent's Pokemon. It makes it a little bit more difficult. No items in battle, so I can't potion spam my way through a fight. The regular Nuzlocke rules are just... Other than the exception of the Dupes Clause, you can only catch the first Pokemon you encounter in each area. And when a Pokemon faints, it is gone forever. I know I could go to Orberg basically immediately, but I figured that was kind of suicide. So I decided I would rather face all the trainers between here and there so that I could level up my Pokemon before, before dealing with the uh, gym leader. When I did decide to fight trainers, first this one had a Seedra. I guess I had already fought the previous trainers without realizing it at the end of last session. Somehow it... I guess I'd forgotten. Seedra appears to be another electric type, which is interesting. And yeah, that was the end of Golem. We didn't have Golem for long, but it still hurt to see him go. Android 25 took care of Seedra. So naturally, I had to go back to the Pokemon Center and lay Golem to rest, so to speak. Sent him to Elysium right next to Lantern. Each playthrough, I have a part of the PC dedicated to the Pokemon that are killed. Specifically because uh, under my rule set, there's a chance for them to come back if I find a Sacred Ash. When I go to the Elite Four, since there will no longer be any chances to find Sacred Ash, I will delete everyone in the uh, dead Pokemon box. Where she had four Pokemon, the first of which being Rayquaza, of all things. Legendaries are scary. It doesn't matter that I have four times the levels. 
it's just the mere fact that it is a Rayquaza is scary. To be fair, though, I'd, I'd have no way of knowing what type it is or what its moves are, so... I guess the fear really comes from the lack of knowledge, and what knowledge I do have just has to do with the natural stats that legendaries have. The fight was ultimately inconsequential because of how quickly ASMR was able to take them down. Due to how I naturally play games, and this is something that I try to avoid, I do end up having that overleveled starter syndrome kind of thing. The next trainer just had an Elekid. Again, doesn't matter. Just destroyed. Ah, yes, Bubble Mail. This this generation is really annoying to do this kind of run because of how many kinds of mail you can get and berries that only exist for puffin making. So, I am so much less likely to find an item that I actually want on the on the ground. One thing that I would like to note is that there is actually two lose conditions for my Nuzlocke. The first lose condition is obviously whiting out. If all the Pokemon that are in my team are knocked unconscious, that's a game over at start over. But also, if I need an HM to progress and I have no new encounters and none of the Pokemon that I have can learn the HM I need to progress, that is also a lose condition. Because I can't catch another Pokemon, even if it's just to use as an HM slave. That's just how I play. So, yeah. One extra lose condition for me. Finally making it into the cave, I am immediately given the HM1, which is the... Rock Smash? which I can't yet use outside of battle. Or, I'm sorry, not 1, uh, 06. I don't know why they put it in the order they did, but whatever. You can't use it outside of battle until you get the first gym badge, obviously. I immediately look at what Pokemon I can teach, and they teach it to Android 25. Yeah, I know I technically have, like, three encounters, to do before I even start the gym, but I figured might as well learn it now. It's not the worst move. I mean, base power 40 isn't great, but it could definitely be a lot worse. And it does help Android 25 with having that move diversity. I avoid these two trainers at first because I feel like for some reason, my mind, they're more difficult than they need to be. I don't actually recall if they actually do have any level advantage, but my gut says that they did. And here we see our friend Games just blocking the door for some reason. And I take this opportunity to go back and get my first encounter for... Orberg Gate. Oh wait, never mind. I... My bad. I go back and I do, in fact, fight this trainer for some reason. I don't know if it was an accident or if I just changed my mind, but it doesn't matter. ASMR is the beast that ASMR is, just blows it into the next dimension with bubble. Then I guess I fight the other trainer. It looks like it wasn't an accident. Generally, I feel like I do avoid those two, though. I don't really know why I do, so maybe it's better that I don't. The other cave person had a Wormadam, and his other Pokemon is a Pyloswine. Probably one shot? Yeah, another one shot. I said it last time, ASMR pretty quickly becomes my go-to Pokemon in this run. Oh, I had a Repel. That... That's strange, I don't remember using it. But I guess apparently at some point I had used a repel. 
which explains why I didn't get the encounter for that area. Heading down, there's a bunch of free items I can get. Like, you can see those two on the left, but there's also, like, two, maybe th three? No, I think it's just two others that you can't see there, so there's just four items. So, the first one is a lagging tail, which I don't remember what that is. Same goes for the damp rock. And looking around, yeah, no, it was just, it's just the four items. X special, completely worthless. And usually the fourth item would be a star piece, but it's another thing of flame mail. It's still only going to be good for selling, but instead of getting like 2,000 polka dollars, it's only going to be like 50 polka dollars. Kind of sucks. I look over here because I feel like I remember there being an item, but I pretty quickly come to realize that that is not the case. And now I think I go for the next encounter. Oh no, I go to this shop. Right, I probably needed to get Pokeballs. So naturally I sold the mail I got. Because literally useless. Same with the X special. Normally I try and not have items. I try to sell items as little as possible. Because if I lose, I'd rather not lose that much money. Because I can sell the items later. But in this run, it really doesn't matter because if I lose then it's game over anyways so I might as well just like sell it now like what's the point of holding on to it I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not wasting money because if I lose I lose and I guess I don't go for the Orberg encounter which I think is strange oh well Orberg mine I walk slowly here because I'm trying to avoid getting the encounter until after I got the item in case the item was going to be useful. But it's just a berry. What was it? A Jaboka berry? If it was a little... Mm, it's just a not great item. I still give it to one of my Pokemon because I'd rather make use of the item. But... Yeah. First I check their stats to see if a Pokemon would benefit from it more than others. I want a Pokemon with a high defense stat so that they can afford to take the hit. Maybe a low speed so they're more likely to take a hit. But yeah, because you really want to make use of every item that you find. I end up giving it to and the Android 25. Although, looking back, I don't know if I would make the same decision. Oh well. Ah, my encounter for the area is Cherubi. I like Cherubi, it's a little, little weird guy. I like how when it evolves, its form changes in the sunlight. Luckily, ASMR has the ability to deal small amounts of damage without just murdering the other Pokemon. So I get Cherubi down a little bit. And I think I just throw the Pokeball here. Yeah, I start chucking Pokeballs. Or no, it, it catches on the first one. Cherubi is another electric type. So, eh. I like how its Pokedex entry talks about other Pokemon though. I feel like that's something that not enough Pokedex entries do is tell you about where each Pokemon is in its, I don't know, the food chain, that's the word. Where's on the food chain? I find that kind of stuff to be super interesting. Anyways, I end up naming my electric type Cherubi. Something. Uh, I guess I forgot to check its stats. I ended up healing and I go up for the next, next encounter. There's like two or three items to get here. I carefully check each area. The encounter was a Magnemite. So I immediately switched to ASMR to tank the hits. I get it down to a third of its HP and start chucking Pokeballs.
The Magnemite was just a normal type though, which, unfortunate, a uh, normal is not the best type by any measure. I mean, it's not the worst. It, it's not super effective against anything, but there's a lot of really strong normal type moves. That's kind of how they balance it. But, you know. Before I check what the thing, what type it was, I go ahead and grab the bloom mail and whatever the other item was. Oh, nope, I just grabbed the mail. Ball, that's right, I called the Magnemite Ball and I called the Cherubi Battery. I think I was thinking of like those little circular batteries you can sometimes see in really small electronics, like in hearing aids and stuff. Yeah, it only knew Thunder Fang, which isn't the best move, but I mean, decent. And has Water Veil, can't get burned. Ball had a rough skin, which I find out later that it is actually a pretty decent ability, a lot better than I had given it credit for. Not in this run, actually, in a later run. Uh, it just has Heal Block, which is probably not going to be very useful, and Hyper Fang, which with the same type of attack bonus is nice, but still, I don't like moves that don't have 100 accuracy. It's just frustrating for me. I also encountered a Happiny, which uh, I think I just one-shot with Rogue. Oh, almost. I bite it to near death, and then I hit it again. Right, and for some reason, I guess Truby generally have Miracle Seeds? I, I don't know. I just take the Miracle Seed off of Cherubi because I, I saw it was holding an item. There's a couple Pokemon that I, that are randomly holding items, which makes sense since the held item is set to be random for wild Pokemon, but it ends up causing some very interesting things. Like, uh, there are Pokemon where apparently they will always hold a potion that they can't use because they're Pokemon. But Boreon gives me a bit of a scare when I find out Rogue can't deal too much damage and it has a scary move. Followed by Ancient Power. But ultimately, wasn't that bad. Just crush it. And then quickly heal, and I go down to see, I think the gym leader's name is Rourke. Oh, for some reason I decided to speak with these people though. I guess I thought that maybe they gave me an item. You really should speak to everyone in the game, since there are just random people who give you good things. I ended up doing that a lot off screen, just talking to the people in the town. I also use this as an opportunity to do a little bit more training. I'm trying to get my other Pokemon to catch up with ASMR. The Pokemon end up learning a few moves, but there weren't any major changes. If, if there ever are major changes, I make sure to look at them so that you guys can see it. There's a Soul Dew here, which is a Latios Latios unique item. So, more likely than not, gonna end up being useless for me. Obviously all the people in the, in the underground, not the underground, but in the mine are also trainers. There's like one, one of them that isn't a trainer, but whatever. It's just another area that's great for grinding EXP. Rourke shows off, and then we continue. A wide lens. Now this is an item that I actually thought could be useful, since it uh, improves my accuracy. So. Now my high power 95 accuracy move, 
could actually have be a little bit more useful. It still isn't great because it's a there is a non-zero chance of failure, but whatever. Got to mitigate. You have to control probability as much as you can. After I'm done with all the people in the mine, I get ready to face the gym and pretty much just head straight there. Ah, before I do that, I think I come to my senses and get that last encounter. Leading with ASMR as a tank. And my encounter was Zapdos. I'm pretty sure I don't catch Zapdos. It looks like it was a poison type, which is terrifying. It's just because it immediately poisons ASMR. So I switch to Android 25 and try and kill it, but it puts me to sleep, and it's just one thing after the other. Oh no, am I gonna be able to like handle this? I try catching it, obviously. Looks like Android 25 had the advantage of being immune to... Right, because Android 25 is a steel type, so its poison moves don't affect Android 25 at all. That was my big brain play of making sure I don't get destroyed. What I think ends up happening is I run out of Pokeballs and I just have to finish it off. I talked a little bit before about catch rates. What you obviously want is a strong Pokemon with a high catch rate, but that's basically no Pokemon. All the strong Pokemon have really low catch rates, so you're unlikely to catch them. And all Pokemon with high catch rates, well some of them are better than others, but ultimately, you know, you're gonna want to train them up a lot. It's annoying that I keep finding low catch rate Pokemon this early in the game, since I don't even have Great Balls at my disposal. So I'm just kind of stuck with... nothing. Once I get Ultra Balls, Legendary Encounters are a lot more manageable. I see, and then I uh, decide to do a little bit more training, remembering the happening up above. Because while it isn't gonna work for a very long time, Happening does give you a lot of experience. So if I can find a lot of them, that'll be a good way of getting my Pokemon up to like a mediocre level for this gym. Because level 6 is way too low. That's how I find out that Happening knows Substitute. I actually don't think I get to the gym in this session. I spend this session just working on, or I spend the rest of this session just trying to train up my Pokemon to, in preparation of the gym. There are trainers in the gym I can go to, but just in case one of them had a Pokemon that prevented you from switching out, I want to get ready before even heading in. Actually, looking at the footage I have remaining, I think I did get to the gym, but I'm going to have to split this video into multiple parts. Looks like I had spent longer playing on that particular day than I remember. So for now, if you like watching me do a Nuzlocke, like the video, subscribe for more. I just want you all to know that I have so much appreciation taking your time to watch my content, and I'll see you all next time.